Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.
the players are in. They are hyped up. There's some serious, serious yelling going on out there. A lot of action. Uh, the LAN energy is flowing, and uh, it's on the back of team performance, I'd say, because they are cooking it up out there, straight up frying. And, you know, we're going to see how they get it done here in hotel. Team performance, backpackers, here we go. Let's get it. Yeah, and I just want to point out for any newcomers, friends, family, watching their, you know, brothers, sisters, sons, daughters compete in this tournament. If you're wondering how this all works and you're kind of confused what's going on, take a look at the video in the bottom left and you just watch that. It will be a lot easier for everybody to kind of understand and how the game is maneuvering instead of just, you know, swapping back and forth between all these players. Yeah, and uh, again, just to back off the bat, uh, 250, you know, is the winning score. And then off to Search and Destroy, the first to six in control, it's the best of three. So, uh, it, you know, just looking at uh, all the players right here in it, it's looking like team performance. Another great start from them with a backpacker's very similar stat line. Sitting on the asparagus stick, just one point again. Team performance really good at that. Trying to push in and look at the defense from the backpackers on this P2, but I think it's just because team performance wasn't in there yet. They try to collapse in. I think it's gonna be on the back of Swift. Is he's able to get that kill? No, Nifty was right there in a perfect spot to defend it. And uh, here we go, backpackers are in it. Honestly, this is a great setup in Marcoso. He is dominating six and three. He was on five, unfortunately not able to earn that glide, but the way that team performance, like they said, they are a heavy breaking team. They haven't relied on the rotations too often. And right now, it's kind of starting to come back for the side of the backpackers. They're getting all the kills. And look at this. Number two, E Dazzle, working his way through the middle of the map. He's the cutoff, man. And will he get caught out? Yes, he will. Swift coming on in through the spawn. And so far, coming on in into P3 Kitchen. I know you love it, Chef. <laughs> Yeah, and I uh, love the stat line too. Backpackers almost got a full set on that one. Team Performance had the full set on the first one. So we're off to the kitchen. Team Performance is in there. Yoda finally got off that donut. He's on the board with the kills. Phantom, the man on the point there. Swift as well, getting some score line for their team. Here we go. Backpackers trying to push into this kitchen. They got the orders. They're trying to put them on the line. Team Performance is like, we ain't cooking your orders. We already know what's going on. We got the strats. We are in here. Here we go. 50-50 shot. Marcoso is laying down, waiting to heal up, trying to push this. There we go. One going to expose himself. Vader in there in the corner, trying to hold this off. All the players are just starting to push in, and now they're pushing out. Phantom going to sneak in, right in between Vader's shots, trying to get it through. The kitchen is all Vader right now, goes into another, but Nifty ends up with it. It is all blue now. Backpackers, kitchen control. Honestly, I can't believe how Tut stayed alive in that little corner. They were trying to shoot through the wall. Unfortunately, he got a lot of that contest time, and the backpackers, they take in early in the game. But so far, performance, they're set up here, ready at the bar. I'm kind of curious what kind of mixed drinks they're going to be cooking up behind. And so far, look at number one, though. Marcoso, once again, making the heads up plate. The timing is perfect on Vader. He finds a second on the point, and the backpackers, just like that, they have broke on into this hill. Yeah, team performance still there with the spawns, so they're going to be able to refill. But no, backpackers somehow just got the spawns. Not sure how that one worked, but see a uh, Toodle in the perfect spot to clean this one up. It's exactly what they're doing. 30 seconds left on the clock. They're in the lead. It's going to stretch out even further. The team performance has to get this next set lined up. And I love how this is going back and forth, Graf. Uh, you know, Backpackers clearly uh, a much better team coming out tonight. Much more prepared, it seems, than Infinite Esports of our last round. Uh, you know, Backpackers just came off of a 2-1 loss. Uh, and Marcoso, he, he's absolute Chad right now. 18 and 8, 4 Street. Time on the hill yet. Serious competitor. And that's what you want to see. You need a player popping off for the backpackers to be able to compete with performance. On the other side, you have Swift sitting at 13 and 7. Not a lot of hill time, but all four members wow. down. The restaurant, it has been reserved as all the players are starting to push on out. Yoda decides to back on up. He has that dead silence to work with. Maybe trying to get a reset. Doesn't go his way. 
Tut, he will lose the gunfight, but E Dazzle and then number three, Nifty. They get the break. And this is phenomenal from the backpackers. They're starting to break down team performance as it's just kind of been a back and forth yeah. series. But you're really looking at Marcoso with that 20 and 11 stat line. That Phantom really popping off here. Got that double. Trying to hold off the middle of the map. Trying to save his team from that rotation. And look at number eight there, Vader, holding off the scrap yet. That's seriously what they need. I mean, looking at the stat line, 107, 102. It's exactly what you want to see. And here we are off to the next point. It is all on the garage. See how they can defend this. And Marcoso is the one trying to break that. E-Dazzle right there with it. You know, he can't be predictable, but it looks like Team Performance is a little too far into apartments and not defending it too well. Maybe they're just waiting for the rest of their team to get into a good position. But I feel like they really allowed them to get up to this garage, and I would have liked to seen them uh, defend it from up top. Yeah, and they left the middle of the map open. Two players able to kind of sneak on through and not necessarily getting the break, but they got a lot of the contest time, made sure they weren't getting it comfortably. But right now, E Dazzle, I don't know what this man ate, but he is 12 and 15, trying to do it solo. Unfortunately, he will fall, but this is what's scary. Team performance, once they get rolling, it's tough to stop. Yeah, and that's definitely true to say, you know, Phantom, uh, the only one sitting negative, but he has the time on hill. A uh, serious, seriously skilled player. You know, back off to a new fresh set of rotations as P1 usually isn't too crazy of a spot on the hill. Usually, you know, back and forth, back and forth. It's all about setting up that P2 as we get into a fresh set. Uh, and Backpackers looking like they're trying to nickel and diamond, but team performance, look at how they're moving through this map, trying to set up that P2, but... Uh, you know, the, the, the back and forth, it just seems like Backpackers is able to kind of inch their way back into this. Yeah, and Tut, he is unfortunately sitting at 6-16, six and 16, the only player that hasn't broken double-digit kills. And that might be the only thing kind of holding them back. It feels like you're maybe playing a 3v4, but I think he heard me because he just <laughs> absolutely dominated Phantom. He made him a ghost on the map, literally. And then team performance, they're set up for this P2. So I like they're finally making some adjustments. The spawn comes on in from Swift. He kills that backside player, but it looks like it's maybe number one Marcoso starting to work his way in through middle, through the lobby, but Swift, oh my goodness, wow. he has so, such a good information. Can he find two? Yes, he will. Vader finds the third. Marcoso left all alone. Yeah, he reads exactly where he's going, though. Looking into the next player. There's one more. Can he snake this bar? Trying to get around it. He has the mixed drink list ready, but he just gets overcome. He's out of there. The rest of his team is trying to get him. But look at Tut. That's a double. Looking for another one. His teammate, E Dazzle, going to clean it up. Phantom just left behind that bar. Has to clean him out. That's one of those must kills. You cannot get out of that hard point. But, you know, honestly, you don't have to. Stay in there. Defend it. The nades, though, that's going to clean it up. As 15 seconds left, that means time to rotate. No one picking up scrap for how close this game is. That might be a kind of big deal. How, how far they are, you know, less than 30 points away. But it is off to the kitchen grab. Here we go. They are ready to cook it up. Team performance is there. Two backpackers trying to push it. And honestly, I like how you pointed that out, Chef. That was, I think, you let 15 free seconds yeah. go, and you still don't win the rotations. It was still a 2v2 on the point performance. They were fully set up, and that's 15 seconds you wish you had back, right? You're going to be, what, sitting at 165, and that's going to make the difference in this game, and I, I think that's kind of a lapse in judgment for Team Backpackers. Yeah. Yeah, like you said, they didn't even win the rotation, so what was it for? Absolutely nothing. Get that 15 and then show up late rather than get nothing and show up late. So, uh, you know, team performance is here, but all of Backpackers is pushing in. They got that fridge set. Everything is on the table trying to cook it up, but no, it is Vader again. This guy is the chef, okay? He is controlling this whole thing, laying it down, getting that scrap. He is always the guy to clean that kitchen up. And uh, off to the next points. Looking like Swift was there, but no, it is all backpackers now. They should have this spawn. We'll see where the next guy comes in at. We see team performance popping in in the middle. And yeah, backpackers has that control. Get someone back there and anchor it. Oh. 
uh, if we're gonna look at Marcoso with that nice double. Uh, no, Backpackers, I think they're in a good spot to come back from this. I mean, talk about the backpack it is, Marcoso. The man's 36 and 21. Nobody has broken 20 on his team. My oh goodness, my I thought he had the triple. That would have been insane. But the guy is turning up for his squad, and they are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Giants in performance. Yeah, I don't like that he jumped off of there. He, he could have just stayed up. His definitely, uh, his, uh, his, uh, <laughs> His, like, testosterone was just going off. <laughs> the <laughs> ego. <laughs> yeah, there's his ego challenge that like crazy. I think he could have just stayed up there and defended the spot. So that's one of those power positions. Uh, look at team performance, though. Under 30 to go. Uh, but Backpackers, again, they have the spot. They have the rotation. Vader's the only one over there. As I love that he's waiting. He's waiting for 7 and 5 for Swift and Yoda oh. to get oh. in. But Vader with the pistol, you don't see that too often. Uh, backpackers, they have the defense to get it set up, but performance is all around them in this restaurant. It looks like it's going to be a full wipe nifty. The Ooh. last one left. He cleans it up. Performance does not have the spawn. This is where it's all going to come together. I was going to say the only thing for backpackers, make it to that P6. Make it to that rooftop hill. Don't have a breakdown. And oh, Marcosos. I didn't realize he actually had a glide bomb. And Tut has earned one as well. You need to contest this time. Make sure you get to that P6 because you will have Tut with that glide bomb. You're going to try to get that break early. As you can grit this scrap, it will mean everything for the backpackers. But nobody's on rotation. And now it's just a sprint yeah. to this P6. Nobody is there. Backpackers, they are going as fast as they can. It is an uphill climb. Performance, backpackers, who's going to take this one? Uh, well, Performance has the high ground on this one, I think, with Vader underneath. This is going to be 50-50 fights the whole way. We're going to see a lot of contesting of the time. But uh, look at Performance. Now, a lot of wiping going on here. It is only Marcoso to try and get in, but they have this thing defended. They know that he's going to mount there. Five seconds left here. Team Performance should be able to clean this one up, and there it is. Two 50. And honestly, you know, the backpackers are right there. I love the back and forth. They had the lead for quite a bit of this, hitting that with a 220 finish. Yeah, and I wasn't realizing that Tut maybe invested his glide bomb early. So I don't know where that happened. Maybe when he was kind of sitting in the backside. But so far, so good for the side of team performance. A little scary. A rocky start. And Marcoso. 43 and 27. They're nice. not able to come away with the win. And just great stuff, though, from that man. <coughs> he was doing everything to try to make sure he kept that game close. And I think outside of him, it, it, this kind of would have been a blowout. Yeah, well, you know, I think that they're ready for some SND coming up. I believe we're at Fortress. Uh, and coming into SND for how back and forth that hard point was, you know, I'd love to see a round 10, round 11 here. I feel like both teams were kind of playing off of each other, just really countering the countering, you know, and then countering that counter, just back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you know, they seen everyone rotating into one spot, and then they were able to counter that and just anchor in a different spot, get them spawns, wait, get everyone together, then push it from different sides. And of course, the doubles, the triples, they were just coming nonstop from really both teams. Really just Marcoso, honestly, he, he was popping off. Yeah, that dude was just flying out of the top hotel room, like you said. Unfortunately, it just wasn't enough to get his team the win. And now looking at Albagra Fortress, you're really starting to see who has that ability where you're not relying on the one player. And we saw team performance. This is what I think they have improved on since their last LAN. They're not ego challenge, which I love yeah. to see. They're adapting. They're finally figuring out what works for them, but they weren't allowing those untraded kills to come uh, through in that first series. Yeah, untraded kills are definitely huge. That's going to come in a huge part here in S&D. Uh, you know, we don't know the backpackers that often uh, or that much at all, really, to know if they're going to be pulling out a sniper, which, you know, un speaking of untraded kills, the sniper is where it's at. Uh, we've seen Vader pulling out the pistol, putting some nice kills with it on that last one. 
I uh, know Tut uh, was slacking a little bit on that hard point, so it's going to be on them to see how they pull themselves together for this S and D. Uh, Marcoso, though, I'm seeing at least at least a triple coming out of this uh, next S and D. There's got to be one round right where he pulls that off. It just seems like with the gunny that he had, he wasn't missing many bullets. But I like how you pointed out Tut. He had such a slow start to that map, and you kind of just take a look back. If if he didn't have that, you know, just molasses start, he would have been able to maybe. <laughs> you know elevate his team to you know that extra 30 seconds and we're pointing out they yeah. left that 15 seconds on the table imagine what that would have meant it would have been a 250 235 and it probably would have maybe been able to calm yourself hey, down like you're not always that, that cool far like behind but you look back at that and sometimes you wish you had those seconds back yeah, exactly. And, and when it's that okay. close, it's really what it comes down to. You know, I've casted a bunch of 249, 250 matches, and it's that last second scrap. You just got to play into your strat for getting that. Sure, there are times, obviously, you know, you want to just kill it, be like, this next point's much more valuable. But if you're not getting the rotation and you're not getting the scrap, you're not getting the win. That's just what it is. You need that score line. So now let's talk about this next S and D on Fortress. From what we've seen, what do you think some strong suits are from these players going into this? I think you're kind of relying on the setups from the backpackers. Once they kind of got in the hill, they felt relatively comfortable. They were trading effectively. They were watching all the correct lanes that they needed to. And then of course Marcoso dropping 43. He's going to be your probably your first blood man. But you're looking at a setup. Don't get blooded. Don't give performance anything for free. Make them work for it. And then on the other side, I think you're relying on Vader. I know a lot of these ARs love the fortress, but I'm kind of curious. Is a sniper going to be brought out on those staircases? Yeah, I've seen some snipers play that. You know, this is definitely not a big sniper map. Usually A is the one where you see it. I see Nifty uh, defending that. I don't think I've seen his point of view yet if he's rocking the sniper. But no one really going towards A. Uh, B very hot. Team performance now up 4-2. Marcoso still has the bomb. Trying to lock down this middle. But here comes two players coming in. The nade's going to come out. But the other player ran out. So he's not going to get traded. Uh, Vader does find Nifty though. That's going to bring into a 1v3 and Ooh. team performance. You know, comes off of that win. Usually, whoever wins the hard point loses the first round of uh, S and D. But look at this team performance. Great job, just keeping that momentum. And you can see there is no love between these two teams. Swift giving them a few extra to the body <laughs> to make sure Marcoso is, is truly dead. But like you said, it's going to be really dependent on finding those first bloods. Nifty, he got caught. Dazzle, Tut. And Tut had the advantage. I just don't think he had the submachine gun. He had an AR out. I think if he has the Vaznev, he wins that one. I love E Dazzle's setup here. Mans knows what's going on. Phantom gets the kill. Tried to get him off of it. There we go. There's the trade. Phantom is out. Gonna bring it to a 3v3, nice trade there. Bomb is down, it looks like, on B. And this is such a tough spot to get across. You have Vader locking down tunnel, there we go. Easy, just walked right into the trap. Two players watching stairs. Like, how do you break into here? This is not gonna happen. And talk about a full send. I love that team performance. They straight out sprinted, they didn't care. There was only one player watching it and he got caught out. And that was maybe the setup I didn't like, that Lone Ranger. If you kind of push into that P1, you leave yourself exposed. Unlike where he's sitting at the top of the stairs, kind of on a heady or maybe on one of these back boxes. He's at least able to get one, potentially two, and scurry away with his life. Make it that much more difficult. Unfortunately, if you go through those double doors, you're kind of just leaving yourself and leaving your post unnecessarily yeah, very true. Looking at Swift here, 4 and 0. Oh. Uh, you know, he's streaking for sure. Vader on it as well. There we go. Deddy's pop for Swift. Be interesting. See how he gets that push. <laughs> Almost misses the mantle, though. Running out of that Deddy, waiting for that nade. Gonna be able to rush in. It looks like Phantom might get caught off guard here. It doesn't look like Swift is gonna capitalize on it, though. Yoda is out. We're in that 3v4. There we go. Swift able to get tight. Uh, Vader down as well. The trade's coming in now. 2v3. Team performance down. Backpackers needs this now. 0-2 along with Nifty 0-2. Tut on the 0-3. 
by Marcoso. Again, look at that. Four and two on the backpack of him. I think that's where this name of the team's coming from because this guy is straight carrying. I got to see what backpack he got on because that, that, that's a nice backpack. Oh my goodness, five and two as he finds that final kill as well. But I liked how the side of backpackers, they were kind of working off of each other. They were making sure they weren't giving uh, the flanks to the enemy. And they were evader. He almost caught that player out. Luckily, E Dazzle was there to find it. But yeah, you look at the stat line. Tut again, 0 and 3. Nifty, 0 and 2. And then you have 5 and 2 from Marcoso and E Dazzle, 2 and 2. On the other side, Yoda, really not strong with a force at this moment. Hasn't gotten a kill on the board yet. And Marcoso first down. Nifty down. No trades coming in from the backpackers. E Dazzle tried to get one in. He knows that Yoda's up there as well. Fighting from down low, not gonna cut it. Both players are next to each other though. Gonna throw some tactiles in, but as he was throwing the stun, Yoda catches uh. a double. No! Team performance now, three and one. Absolute stunner. Uh, and that's the worst timing. He throws the stun and then he hit the reload. So right as it came in, Yoda basically getting the freest two kills of his life. He eats him up, knocks him down. But team performance, they're picking up right where they left off from the last series. It's a 3-1 start. And they are just so tight-knit. They... They are so decisive. They are feeling so confident at going on into these bomb sites. It's a full send and they don't care. Yeah, you see team performance. They didn't really move. They ran up to their spots, got it set up. They're on the defense and backpackers kind of ran in a little too far. I want to see E Dazzle pick up something here. He's in a great spot, great defensive position. Uh, Tut kind of tucked away, not really going to be able to get anything. Uh, Nifty is holding off this team performance push, but they don't really have to go anywhere. They are defending. They are pushed past B, uh, and it's on Vader to make sure that they don't rotate out, and Nifty has to make a move here, and I think e, -da e Dazzle's the one that has to clean this one up. And look at Phantom, though. He's going to keep him from moving. And yeah, he's sitting in a good corner. It's Swift. He actually gets caught out as well, so great recognition from E Dazzle. And now maybe you leave the A bomb site a tad bit open. The only thing I don't like, they're waiting so long to get this bomb plant down, mm. and it makes it so difficult because if you're starting to plant now, see number eight, he could potentially work around this back plank. No, he decides he gets back down by Tut in that number one player. In Phantom, he happens to take care of the number four. That was E Dazzle pushed up in the corner. A straight 2v2. Tut yet to find a kill. Ooh. Nifty goes down as well. So can King Tut clutch this one up. Yeah, he's in a great spot. One of those must kills. They have to get in there and chow. Ah, oh, it looked like uh, Phantom went for the bomb defuse. So it was really just a 1v1 and move off to the bomb. Uh, and I like kind of how they waited. You know, they made sure that it was safe to plant and it all worked, but you know, they didn't make sure it was safe to defend because they just got walked through on there. And I'm not sure if Tut got stun checked by Vader and oh, Vader just shoulder checks and that's what exactly you want to see. A lot of skill gap is going to be in those world champion shoulder checks. You basically just peek out as little as you can, and you can get that information if there's a player sitting in the corner and still get out with your life and be ready for that challenge. Yeah, team performance up 4-1 coming here. Uh, King Tut sitting on the O. Nifty sitting on the zero. I mean, and we've seen Yoda bounce back now, three and four. That bounce back just not coming from the backpack. You know, Marcoso putting in a lot of work. The energy coming from this guy, the chows, the peaking, the shouldering, just next level. You know, but he has to work with the rest of his team. He dazzles falling here. That leaves just one player that has ever even gotten a kill yet for this s and and team performance. You know, the first word in their name, team. We see there on the bottom left, Nifty ran right past Phantom. Didn't even see him like, oh my gosh, that's just not going to put you in the tournament in a great spot. I mean, backpackers, uh, I, I'm not I'm not seeing a, 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 a top tier oh. team right here. But Marcoso's yeah, but top tier for sure. <laughs> yeah, he hits a few good shots. But like I said, the one thing that has been struggling for the side of the backpackers is their setup. 
you should not be able to walk onto this B site like the side of performance has for the two offensive rounds. Yeah, yeah you give them one, right? But you should be able to adjust and be like, hey, that setup wasn't great. And again, I believe it was E. Dazzle who was that lone man over there. He pushed through the double gates, and I just don't <coughs> want to see that on your setups. Yeah, uh, backpackers... Uh, you know, if you're not getting the kills, get the bomb, right? Push up, but look at team performance. They were able to push up through, get that defense in, and look at Swift. Look how far Swift was able to push up. That should not happen. I'm gonna take the chow from up top. You're really just shouldering it. Marcoso knows that he can't peek this because there could be someone up there on wood, and you already know there is. The defense is coming in hot. Yoda's in a great spot, making sure no one rotates towards B. Now, team performance just really has such the amazing setups that I just don't see too often from other teams. And before, we've seen Vader in Yoda's spot, so we know this is a different strategy that they're running. And backpackers, I feel like they're running the same strat, trying to just inch towards A, just inch and inch and inch. It's like, no, you got to go full power. You got to put that grill on high. You got to cook them up. Look at Marcoso, going to get taken out from Vader, just holding it off, defending it. Uh, team performance, uh, it's looking like a 6-1. Yeah, Nifty. 0-5, Tut 0-6. You have two players who haven't been able to buy a kill. Finally, Nifty grabs his first and Swift. He did happen to just scamper on away, but has the bomb. And uh, this is what I was talking about. I hate that they're waiting so long to plant this because sometimes a player might be able to slip on through the back. They're thankful that nobody did. Oh, oh. And number six, Phantom, he did... Slow his roll and Tut finds one, hey. so they both get off, but Phantom with the burn, a 2v1, as it will be Phantom trying to clutch this gu gu this game up. Can he do it? Yeah, like I said with backpackers, just get the bomb down. That has to be your strat, because clearly slaying it out isn't going to do it. But hey, there's two ways to win search, and we sh were shown there that, you know, putting that bomb down, putting now the timer on the other hand. Like, oh, 15 seconds, gotta get this bomb down. You gotta switch it to, hey, 15 seconds, I gotta get this defused. Put that pressure on the other team, get that defense set up. You know, the backpackers, you know, they were learning some gunfights there, a little bit better positioning. And, uh, you know, team performance, I feel like they were a little behind. They kind of fell back, maybe seeing a rotation, maybe thinking, hey, there's no way they do the same thing again. And they did, but hey, it worked that time. Finally, we're off of zeros. Nifty was able to get three bodies that time, sitting on the street. Uh, you know, team performance, there's still one away from getting this. It's going to be so difficult, right, to be able to basically pull off a full sale. Not quite there. And e Dazzle, he should have won that one. Unfortunately, puts it the even. The numbers at even. Marcoso, 6 and 8 and 6, 1 and 7 for Tut. They're still looking to find that momentum. Tut putting himself in a good position here. Nifty, unfortunately, Phantom. Once again, he sneaks up on one of the players. They should have the A site control. They're going to get the bomb down at Gallows. And Tut, though, he catches Phantom sleeping and quickly into 2v2. Yeah, and look how much time is on the clock. They got there 30 seconds quicker than Backpackers was able to. You know, this is one of those things you go back, look at the VOD, and see exactly what it is that team performance was pushing on you so hard. But I like Backpackers able to push up here. Marcoso pretty much has to get Vader. They know what's going on. Vader is going to push out, but get taken down. Swift is in a great defensive position. He has the high ground, but he falls back as both players now pushing up. He has to get this trade. No oh. way. What just happened? Team performance gets it as I hear them screaming there in the back. 6-2 team performance. I mean, even if Backpackers got that, they would have had to keep that up, you know, down to the wire again and again. And don't forget, that was the second game. This is best of three. So they'd have to keep that pressure up even in the control. So, I mean, that, that just seemed like a lot that the Backpackers were not coming in ready for. Uh, and that's another two, uh, another loss for them. That one was 2-0. Team performance with another 2-0 win. Uh, just wow, just wow. Oh, goodness, and that is a killer for you if you are the side of the backpackers. And all you had to do, if you're Marcoso, wall bang that. You can shoot through the bottom side, at least back him down even more. And I'm not sure if that was Nifty who didn't get the reload, but he just ran at him with knife out. You had 20 seconds left on the clock. You still had plenty of time to work that 2v1, and they just didn't execute it properly. I think Swift, granted... He got those two great kills. I think that was kind of a blunder from the backpackers. Yeah, the backpackers, uh, they were just running too slow. 
Um, you know, obviously two players not getting any kills for quite a few rounds. That's definitely going to be one of them. Uh, not getting the bomb down quick enough. It, it, it's that's really just what it's all about, honestly. It's the only two ways you can win, and they just weren't doing either of the ways. It's just, it's tough, right? You have a player in Marcoso's getting nine kills and six deaths. He's trying to do everything for his squad. And once again, another slow start from Tut. 0-5 or 0-6, and, and he finally gets a kill. Nifty, I like how you pointed out, he did get three kills in a row, which got him to that round, I think it was eight, unfortunately. Yeah. Just not enough to be able to pull it out. And we will be heading on into a series relatively quick. It's going to be the side of Dak Carries versus Yummy Things. That's going to be the Pool B matchup. These are all teams from Pool A. Team performance. They're seeing that 2-0 in the series count for. 4 0 map count, and I believe the side of Team Backpackers, they are sitting at 0 and 2 yeah. with a 1 and 3 record. Yeah, uh, and that's not going to look too good for their seeding. I'm sure that there are some teams, you know, just 0 and 4 right now, so that one map could put them in a good spot mm -hmm. if there's some ties out there. Uh, you know, and I feel like the Backpackers, they, they aren't too far from getting where they need to be. Uh, it's really just the strats they got to work on, you know, Marcoso. Uh, you know, he's out there. He's doing a great job. You know, was it more of a team play or was it more of him individually going out, getting them kills? You know, that's really for them to decide. But, uh, you know, I'd like to see some more teamwork from them, some more aggression. I feel like they were playing it way too safe. You know, you're at a land. You're at this amazing opportunity out here in person. You, you just got to keep going. You made the effort to come out here. You got to make the effort to get that hill. You, get, you just got to keep that going. And simply, it really comes down to the confidence. Like you said, aggression. I think it's more along the sides of feeling comfortable. And we don't know if it's a lot of these teams' first lands. And when you're going up against the defending champs in performance, that's a high accolade to have under your belt, right? You know you're going up against probably one of the best teams in the tournament. And you, you have a tough loss, right, in this series before yeah. against ATK. You go down in the control. We're not sure what that score was. But still, that just kind of defeats you, right? And not to mention, they were so close on that map one, 250 to 220. Yeah, That's just right going to beat you down. Yeah, they were back and forth over and over. So I'm thinking that first game that they won that round was probably hard point for how mm -hmm. well that went. Uh, you know, and they probably lost the S&D and couldn't get the control. Uh, I would have liked to have seen them win that hard point because clearly they have that down. They uh, have the teamwork. They're able to get them rotations. Uh, and they were picking up, you know, scrap maybe not as much as they should have, but that really just falls into their strats. You know, you have one weakness. A team like Team Performance, they're going to pick it apart. They say, hey, they ain't getting scrap. Let's just lock down this rotation because, you know, if they don't get the rotation, they don't get the scrap, they get nothing. They're going to get the loss. That's exactly what they got. And Team Performance, I mean, granted, they won it, but I think that first map, they should have been able to close it out a lot sooner. They Definitely. were. There's still a lot of niches in that armor that can be broken easily. And so what you're going to have to figure out is maybe the hard point. You have to have a player that's rotating properly and watching the middle of the map. Uh, they've been kind of going 50-50 on those scraps. But I think it's just really, like you said, on those rotations, we harped on it once, we're going to do it again. Because yeah. it's still the only thing that's kind of like, hey, that could be your Achilles tendon. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I love these. Uh, this next team coming up, uh, Yummy Tings. Uh, chef special, I got to say. I want to know what's yummy. We're going to have a little interview with them at some point. Uh, Dax carries. Uh, I'm guessing Dak is going to be doing some carrying. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, <laughs> We'll just happen to see, most likely not uh, Dak Prescott, because he can't carry any team. Sorry, Cowboys fans out there. Uh, but, you know, we just got to throw it, uh, just unlike Dak. Uh, but this next series coming on up is going to be Pool B, and we're looking to see who's going to be able to come out on top. And once again, we're going to recap how this pool play is broken down. So there is, I believe it's 13 teams, or... 14 and so we have pool a b and c the top two teams from pool play will be in the winners bracket the t bottom two teams will be in the losers and i believe in the groups b and c since they have that fifth team i believe they will start off in the winners as well that's kind of yet to be decided 
and you just, like you said, don't want to start out in that loser's bracket. It's just that many more series you have to rely on. Yeah, and it's uh, it's make or break because uh, one loss, you're out, you're done. You know, you're packing it up and going home early, and that's not what you want to be doing here at the land. You want to be out here playing it, grinding. You want to be winning that prize money, 15 hundo on the line. Like, come on now, that's pretty serious. Uh, you know, maybe there's some extra something special that they'll be getting to with that win. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe uh, if it comes in on the plane in time. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot on the line here. You know, a lot of these teams, it's their first land. Uh, getting that experience uh, as well as our first land here, casting. You know, getting experience as well. Uh, Contender Esports, you know, everyone there behind the screen doing an amazing job putting this together. I believe this is one of their first times doing this. And, you know, I, I, I think that everyone here has been doing a great job. The players, you know, doing amazing as well. They're out there putting some crazy energy. <laughs> I love seeing that from the LAN. Uh, and it looks like the players are loading in for our next game.